From the Husky soccer field on the campus of the University of Washington in Seattle, Prime Sports Northwest brings you University of Washington Athletics. Today, it's men's soccer as the University of Washington Huskies entertain their crosstown rivals, the Division II national champion, Seattle Pacific Falcons. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Pickett along with Washington women's head coach Leslie Gallimore. Thanks for joining us for this rivalry. The team the Huskies have played more than any other in Seattle Pacific, a very strong Division II team. Hurt by injuries a little bit coming into today's game, but still a very solid squad under their veteran coach, Cliff McCraft. Definitely, and it doesn't matter what's happened uh, prior in the season for either of the teams. This game's always a big battle, and uh, we look for an exciting match today here against uh, with the Falcons and the UW Huskies. Uh, a game that really has uh, been hotly contested over the last few meetings. We'll talk more about that, but first, a couple of the players for the Seattle Pacific Falcons, beginning with Dion Earl. Yeah, Dion Earl has been uh, hot in the last four games for the Falcons, scoring uh, six goals in four matches, so we look for him to get into the offense a lot and create some goal-scoring opportunities uh, for SPU. Also, Nate Dalicon, uh, a very solid player for them in the midfield. The ball tends to go through him a lot. Uh, we'll look to see him playmaking out of the midfield. And uh, with the field conditions here today, who knows what's going to happen. Well, you talked about being hot, and uh, certainly Dean Wurzberger's team has been hot of late after really what was sort of a, a disastrous start going 2-6-1. and one. The Huskies are 6-1-1 one, and one in their last eight games and playing very good soccer. They are playing very good soccer. A little disappointing that they were knocked out of the tournament, um, you know, with the Sanford's <coughs> loss to Cal last Sunday. But, uh, yeah, Ian Russell and some of the other players on the team are generating a lot of offense. Uh, Ian has, again, scored three goals and had two assists in the last three games. And, you know, he's been a tremendous player for the Huskies. His speed, his one-on-one -on -one ability will do a lot for them up front. And the other big move was switching Joel Hurd back to the sweep position. Yeah, Joel's, uh, you know, his steadiness at the back has really allowed them not to let in as many goals as they were at the beginning of the year. And uh, he's been just solid and very consistent, a lot of leadership back there. And Bill May in the Nets uh, has gotten more time playing and uh, has done a very good job as well. Yeah, you know, that's a battling goal for the, uh, John Edmondson and Bill May. They've been splitting time and both doing a good job. I think the team is comfortable with either of them in the net, and we'll see how Bill does today. It's for a lot of bragging rights around town. The Huskies and the Falcons will be back to introduce you to the starters and get things underway from Seattle right after this timeout. Welcome back to Seattle. Just about ready to get things underway between Seattle Pacific and Washington. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's contest, beginning first with the defending Division II champions from Seattle Pacific. Caleb Cannell, Mark Skipper, John Hambigner, and Kevin Hale across the back for the Falcons. Midfield of Thompson, Dickerson, Stauber, and Dalek on. As we mentioned off the top, the man who will run a lot of the attack, Earl and Martin up front. And in the nets for the Falcons, sophomore from Shorewood High in Seattle, Chuck Grenade. 56 saves and a 1.50 goals against average and overall mark a 9-2-2. Two, and two. For Washington, Hurd, Perdoe, Woodhouse, and Van Herset across the back. Midfield of Sletten, Godat, and Calmy. And up front, Viet Nguyen coming in. Jason Boyce out of today's game. Ian Russell and Eric Penner also here. Boyce missing due to a uh, death in the family. And I want to pass along our condolences to Jason and his family. And in the nets for Washington, Bill May, as we mentioned, getting a little bit more uh, playing time as of late. And a 1.76 goals against average. Cliff McCrath, head coach of the Falcons. As you see in his 25th season, as we mentioned, taking SPU to another uh, national championship last year. And Dean Wurzberger, of course, in his third year as head coach of the Washington Huskies. Fourth year of his career, and Dean with assistants Dave Chesler, Matt Olson, and Chance Fry in his third season, 32, 15, and 9. And as we said, fourth year in career coaching, 40, 24, and 3. Series overall, 26, 11, and 13. But the interesting thing about it, as you see the Falcons winning in overtime a year ago, the last 12 games between these teams dating back to 1984, four Washington wins, four Seattle Pacific wins, and four ties. So it's been a very well contested series over the last decade. Mohamed Sagak Kane is our uh, referee. Walter Boyd, Vince Vili are the linesmen as we get things underway. Huskies in their home whites, Seattle Pacific in the visiting red jerseys. Doesn't look as though their uniforms will stay white much of the game, though. <laughs> yes, uh, not the type, type of game mom would love, huh? Or dad, or whoever's doing <laughs> cleaning these days. <laughs> May going to have to try to get to an early deflection and may have a problem here. And back in the nick of time to uh, take care of that shot from Dion Earl as uh, John Heimbigner tried to 
rather uh, Jeff Martin tried to set him up for it. Huskies dodging a little bit of a bullet there. Uh, that's not something you want to have happen early in the game. Well, and field conditions are not going to make things any easier for the keepers today, are they, Leslie? No, I was speaking with Coach McGrath before the game, and he uh, spoke about factor games, and you don't like to think of other factors other than both teams preparing themselves to play each other, but sometimes conditions do become a factor, and the field conditions today may. Well, both these teams uh, also missing some players. Uh, we mentioned Boyce out for Washington. Uh, Nick Klaftich, who'd have a very good year for Seattle Pacific, out with an injury. And uh, both these teams have had uh, a lot of man games missed due to injuries and other problems during the season. It'll be interesting today to see how uh, Viet Nguyen does coming in for Jason Boyce. Dean's been really pleased with his performance as a freshman on the team and very skilled player. Not quite the pace of Jason Boyce, but again, somebody with a lot of ability and he'll have a chance today to show that. I would think there, Leslie, the biggest concern for uh, Dean would be just in, in the offense and the number of shooting attempts that Jason Boyce tends to have. In fact, uh, coming into the game today, he has more than 25 percent of the team's shots on goal for the season. So that's uh, pretty impressive numbers for the freshman. That is, and that, as a head coach, you know, that's where you hope that there's other people on the team that are going to step up in his absence and, uh, and, and uh, create some opportunities themselves. I think we'll see that from them. First touch really for and win as we watch him down the side. Freshman from Lakes High in Tacoma. Tried to get to Penner and put it a bit behind. Nice job by Van Herset to get in front of that one. Good job by the Seattle Pacific University defense to get numbers in the box. They had seven or eight guys in the box there to knock that cross out. The Huskies were pretty well marked. Mr. Sagakaneg making the uh, whistle call there and the free for Seattle Pacific. Leslie, anything that fans should be looking for in these opening minutes? Uh, generally, so often with teams, it's a situation of kind of probing against one another's defenses. Good control here by Earl, but at a uh, late flag for the offside call as uh, Dion almost set up another scoring opportunity in the box. Yeah, I think when, when you do have a game that is such a kind of crosstown rivalry, a pride game, a, a big game for both teams, the first five or ten minutes are not necessarily nerves, but just kind of you know, feeling out the opponent and seeing seeing what the pace of the game is going to be like. And I think that's what's going to happen here in the first, you know, five, ten minutes of the match. And also adjusting to the wetness of the field. People don't realize what that does to pace and also uh, what it can do to a, a waterlogged ball after a <laughs> while, too. And just your footing. If you're a defender, a lot of times you'll be a little more tentative as far as going in on tackles and um, or, or maybe chasing down a ball and changing your direction. Todd Stauber with the ball for the Falcons. Earl left side. Hold it back across. It will get to a, a teammate Stauber who has it deflected. Calmy with the block for Washington and then may able to come up with that one. But a good move by Earl down the left side as he was able to get around uh, Kyle Godat. Yeah, just tremendous work on the ball by Dion Earl. He saw him get right to the end line and cut that ball back to the top of the box. So far, the early deflections favoring the Falcons. In a day like this, as you mentioned, with the footing and everything else, one break can sometimes make a major difference. Exactly. That's a nice turn there by Viet. Eric Penner. You win a nice one-two with Prudeau. And a free for Washington as he's brought down. Freshman from Kent Ridge High and Redmond. He's got a little bit of the legs there. Nate Dalicon coming in a little late on the challenge. A little bit of distance here as you uh, see the freshman once again, but uh, room to pop this one into the box. Looks as though Sletton's going to take the re kick. Count me. Get out, get out, get out. 
cleared, I believe, by Dalicon, and it'll be a throw in to Washington. The uh, scramble effort there by Dominic Dickerson to try to keep it in. You can already see where Nate Dalicon is a really vital, important, you know, a vital person on the, the SPU team. He's involved in everything. Um, when they're attacking, he gets the ball. When they're defending, he's the one winning it. Woodhouse finding Russell. Russell with a couple men in the box. Earl coming back to help, and Earl will clear now. Again, SPU doing a good job of doubling up there on Ian, playing really solid defense. Earl shedding free, and uh, the Falcon captain battling there along the side. Wanted to get a whistle and didn't get it as he was ridden off the ball. Perdoe looking for Penner, and again with two markers almost immediately on uh, Penner. Russell with some single coverage right now. Calmy trying to slip through on that one goes off the foot of John Heimbigner, and he'll put it into touch for a throw in for Washington. Just about seven minutes unofficially gone here in the first half. Dean Heimbigner up and or excuse me, Dean Wurzberger up making some uh, adjustments. Repositioning players just a little bit. Nguyen trying to chip that one on. Nicely played by Hale. Only as far as Joel heard. And there's uh, one of the slips we talked about. Big roar from the Falcon bench wanted to handball called on the Joel's control. Yeah, see, that's, that's where they're going to have to be a little bit careful today. Composure at the back is one thing, but when you know, you've got somebody running at you, you've definitely got to be careful of this mud here and slipping and turning a ball over that you normally wouldn't. The interesting thing about these two teams playing each other as well is they both play with a three front, uh, which leaves a lot more room in the midfield. Uh, you know, a 3v3 matchup there. And again, if field conditions were a little bit different, you'd probably see the ball going through the middle a little more. But why don't you go ahead and explain that for folks who may not be familiar with the term about a three front and what that alignment means and how it differs from other lineups? Uh, a lot of teams traditionally play a 4 4 2 or a 3 5 1 with one forward uh, up top. But both of these teams play with three. Three forwards, uh, enabling them to generate a little more offense using uh, a right and a left wing and a central forward, um, forcing the other team to have to keep a couple you know, numbers back to defend there. Allows your forward line to put a little bit more pressure on the defense as well. Exactly. Uh, when, when a team's trying to play it out of the back, you've got three up there pressuring, uh, trying to turn the ball over in, that, in their attacking third. Dalicon with a chance to make a move here. Van Herset closing him from behind and Dalicon's shot will go wide. A lot of power be behind that uh, quick left footed flick. Definitely. Nate Dalicon showing some speed there as well. Joel Hurd trying to read where the pass is going to go potentially. Which Van Herset chasing him down there from the side and he just miss hits it wide. Russell unable to get to the pass from Penner and a throw in for Seattle Pacific. Heimbigner, another co-captain, repositioning. Good flick there by Stauber. Heard back to clear. Penner battling and taken off the ball by Mark Skipper. Stauber. Earl trying to let the ball do the work that time, but closed down nicely by Charles Sletton. Skipper went left, the ball went right as he tried to set up the one-two. Penner putting it into touch and a throw in for SPU. I'll check it, it'll be a throw for Washington. Good switch and a nice turn by Dalicon to send it on. Missed over there by Kenny Thompson. It's kind of difficult to tell exactly what SP is doing, but it seems they may be playing five in the midfield with one up front and then sending, uh, depending on where the play is, shooting people out of their midfield into the front line. Just flying them down the sides. Exactly. We'll 
Let's see if the Falcons will play long ball here as Hale tees it up on the restart. Heimbigner to take it. Dangerous deflection there and cleared nicely by Van Herset as Jeff Martin was waiting on the edge of the box. Look at the redshirt freshman from Richardson, Texas. Starting his 12th game of the season. Coach Warsberg has been very happy with Richard Van Herset's play this year. And again, they've changed their defense around a little bit. In the middle of the season, they've had a lot of success in the last seven, eight games. Dominic Dickerson's long throw, cleared by Godat. Russell. Off of Mark Skipper and a throw in the attacking area for Washington. Penner looking for someone in a hurry. Russell with two defenders. Outraces them but can't control it. Little look there at the uh, attacking speed of Ian Russell. He's got tremendous speed and that's where I think the Huskies are going to get a lot of their opportunities today if they can spring Ian Russell free on the right wing for some services into the box. Leading scorer now for Washington. Eight goals and four assists for 20 points. 14 of those points coming over the last eight games. The stretch in which Washington has gone 6-1-1. One, and one. Saw Dean Wurzberger again up and moving players around a little bit as the ball changes possession. Yeah, I think SPU has kind of uh, thrown a lineup at them that they weren't necessarily expecting, but they've made the proper adjustments and they've got them matched up. Thompson with a nice turn as he holds off Perdo. Perdo whistled for the contact anyway. Quick restart. And the win with a strong bump and may get a talking to from the official here. As he uh, knocked down Kevin Hale. It's actually going to get more than a talking to it looks like. Yep. And perhaps a good time for the referee to make that. Just things starting to get a little bit uh, frantic. Here see he beats him, goes in, turns his back, and it was definitely a blatant foul after the ball was gone. I guess the best thing you can say about it is it wasn't done in a dangerous part of the field to allow them to get a shot on goal afterwards, but. Sprint down the near side touch. Russell winning it. Has Penner out in front. Keeper coming off the line. 50-50. Penner doesn't see it. It's... Uh, at the top of the box as Grenade came off his line and uh, battled with Penner. Russell trying to chip far post over Grenade and a corner kick as it was touched by the keeper according to the official. It's a great effort by Ian Russell out there on the right wing. Slash shot he gets off here. Pick up the tent. Now, Red. You saw the little tick that time. That, I think that definitely might have been a save. That looked like it had potential to go in. And a great job by Russell even earlier in that sequence to win the sprint from better than half the field down the line and uh, get possession of the ball in the first place. He's dangerous on that right wing. It's a great save by Chuck Grenade there. Russell to take the corner. Off the scramble cleared by Todd Stauber. Heard. And that one will go into touch for a throw in. No score here early in the first half. We're in the 15th minute of play in Seattle. Division two Seattle Pacific and Division one Washington. No score in the contest. 51st meeting between these two teams. As we mentioned, the most frequent opponent in the history of the Washington soccer program. It's hard to say, Todd, here in the first 15 minutes, who's had more of the play. Um, but they both had a couple chances on goal, the most recent coming for the Huskies down there with Ian Russell crossing a ball in from the right. But uh, the Falcons have also had their chances, uh, one really early on, and then they've had the ball down here a couple times. Bill May hasn't really had to come up with a save yet, but it's been fairly even. Anything that you've seen in terms of the... Uh the chess match in the opening 15 minutes of play. Uh, yeah, I think Coach Warsberg is probably just trying to figure out uh, what they want to do as far as matchups at the back. It looks like they're keeping too high, um, and they're just going man-to-man -man with Todd Woodhouse and Richard Van Hurst marking up. 
You saw the chip from Nguyen a minute ago that was handled by Grenade. Cliff McCrath uh, joining the <laughs> PSN staff today. I, I don't know whether he wants a cameraman's internship or uh, actually he's uh, taking the high ground to uh, uh, do a little strategic work there. Yeah, before the game he mentioned he wanted to come up here with he, us. He likes watching it from up, up top. Yeah, he took one look at that scaffold and knew where he wanted to be. And uh, first we thought he was kidding, but up there in the breeze. Maybe he plays chess better from <laughs> altitude. Well, with that record, you can't fault what he decides to do. Exactly. I think he's checking out the viewfinder there as well. But uh, Penner trying to shake his marker. Eric Penner does a great job there to get the corner. Skipper conceding it. First time Eric Penner will not lead the Huskies in scoring at the end of a season. We saw him a moment ago, led the team in goals, assists, and points, each category in this first three years. Played the dummy there and it went deep to Nguyen. And a goal kick for SPU. And that's not really a discredit to Eric. It's more a credit to the team and uh, Coach Wurzberger's recruiting and the improvement of the team. And Absolutely. I, and I think Eric realizes that. Uh, he's also been plagued with some injuries this year that, uh, you know, if he had the season to do over again, I'm sure he'd rather to be rather be a little bit healthier. But, uh, you know, you look at his past three seasons here, and he's been a tremendous, uh, you know, part of this program and its success. Also has one of the more interesting notes of, of anybody in the media guide. Uh, does Eric Penner, and that is that his uh, great grandfather was the captain of the first soccer team at the University of Kansas. He also played a little bit of basketball for some fellow by the name of Naismith at the same time. So. Wow. <laughs> Go figure. And Penner trying to win that one in the air. Go that. Find skills by everyone. And a throw in for Washington as that one skips by the SPU bench. Sophomore Caleb Connell, we mentioned uh, he and Stauber both from Oak Harbor. Godet restarting. Penner. And another throw in for Washington. A reminder, Pac-10 Volleyball comes your way on Prime Sports Northwest tomorrow. The big showdown in the Willamette Valley, Oregon, taking on Oregon State. All the action comes to you tomorrow at 9, right here on Prime Sports Northwest. Both those two teams that count a victory over the other is an important part of the season. Godat trying to chip top of the box. Nicely played by John Heimbigner. Dalekon. Stauber looking long for Earl, who switched over to the other side, and it goes too far. May able to come up with it. And a look at the redshirt freshman from Castro Valley. Started five of the last eight games for Washington. That was a nice ball by Stauber. Just a little bit uh, inside. Bill May did a good job of reading it and coming out quickly. Calmy brought down that time by Earl. Both were kind of tussling there a little bit. Penner gets it off the restart as the header was missed by the defender. And the long ball from Calmy, he'll get the assist. Penner putting it in unofficially in the 20th minute. And we'll take a look at Eric Penner's sixth goal of the year. You look at Calmy on the ball. Very good placement of the ball by John Calmy. Defender just doesn't get up there high enough. Actually kind of ducks. Penner, great first time finish. I think Eric was surprised that it wound up where it did, and uh, really kind of a surprise that it got to him as Mark Skipper missed the header. So Penner, his sixth from Calmy in the 20th minute to make it 1 0. Eric playing in one of his final games here, close to his final games here at UW. That's a great goal for him and great way to wind down his career. Also moves him into a tie for fourth on the all-time career goal scoring list with his 37th goal 
in his career. And as you mentioned, after a season where he has uh, been beset by some injuries, that is a, a real self-pleaser along with the fans. Yep, exactly. Great touch on it as well. 18.52 given as the official time. Remember in college soccer, a little bit different clock situation with stop clock. And so that's the official time now. And a one nothing lead. Russell coming back to help clear and the throw in to SPU, however. Thompson getting it in quickly for Martin. And a look again at the numbers. Penner, the sixth goal of the year. Calmy with his third assist, 15th point overall. Dickerson to take the throw. Dominic Dickerson leading SPU with 10 assists. Tops for the Falcons in that category. Skipper. A lot of shots coming from the outside here now for yeah. the Falcons. And now that they're down 1 0, you're going to see more people pushing forward for SPU. Well, and that goal also brought Cliff McCrath down off the scaffold and back to the Falcons bench as well. Mark Skipper, who's uh, I'm sure a little bit uh, upset right now after missing the clearance at the other end a moment ago. And Skipper just took that one right off the table. I didn't know if it'd get up here to the second level. Need to remove the scaffolding so we can. Uh, claim souvenirs. Takes the ball a little bit longer to get into play on school days. No ball boys or girls. <laughs> Skipper bringing that one down. Earl trying to keep it in, but it just did get over the line. Dion doing his best, but will return to position. Wait. Even that effort, even though it went out of bounds, that effort by him, uh, by Dion Earl, shows his ability. I mean, he's a skilled player who's composed under pressure. And he's going to try to make something out of every ball that comes his way. Real comfortable with the uh, Falcons' home matches as well, since they're played at his alma mater, Newport and Bellevue. Godat finding a semi-dry patch for the restart. Penner. Russell claiming it first. Godat, a nice stop. Sletton looking for Russell, but it was taken away by Dickerson. Heard back off of Earl. a little bit more uh, relaxed pace for the Huskies as well with the early one goal lead. Well, they know, although they know better than to relax too much. Russell trying to get to this chip was ridden off it. SPU doing a good job of clearing that ball. A little room here for Thompson to control. Deion Earl's making a good run. Stauber finding Dalekon. Earl checked by the uh, line for a moment. Now the chip for him, and again, just a little bit too deep as May comes up with it. Delicon was signaling to some of the other people that were running as well that he saw them, but just decided to play the ball to Earl. Earl draws a lot of attention from the UW defenders. Godat trying to that was more battle than up <laughs> and over Earl, yeah. That was more than a little attention. <laughs> that was a piggyback ride there by Kyle Godat. Good challenge. Stauber taking this free. In the back line, able to handle that one easily. Connell, along with Heim Bigner. Losing that one now, and Russell, a little two-on-two -two chance. 
Penner trying to chip back for Russell. Had Sletten at top and then Russell bringing down Todd Stauber and uh, that may bring our second yellow. We'll see. Ian Russell controls the ball there. I think he was uh, oh. trying to go for the ball, <laughs> but uh, obviously a little late. Maybe a little flamboyance on Mr. Stauber's part as well. Russell gets a, a talking to, but no more, no card. Heard. Nice job on a difficult stretch of field right there. Yeah, that's not the place you want to be trying to dribble the ball, really. So the midfield of both teams might not come into play in the center of the field anyway that much today. A lot of wing attacks. <laughs> Well done by Brandon Prudeau. Sletten trying to get it across to Calmy, but it's uh, taken away. Stauber. Dalekon, strong challenge that time from Godat. Calmy getting possession, looking for Russell. Connell there once again. Calmy. Here's where John Calmy can be very dangerous. We saw a great run from John last time from that area and all the way in for a goal. Yeah, their game against Old Dominion, he made a run from the other half of the field. Everyone kept waiting for him to lay it off, and he beat three or four players and put one away. He's a, he's kind of a quiet player. You don't notice him for a little while, and then he, go ahead, he goes ahead and makes a run and gets some scoring chances. We'll have a throw in for Seattle Pacific when we return. The Huskies lead 1-0. Welcome back to Seattle. 28th minute of play in our first half. Washington leading at 1-0. The goal by Penner is sixth of the year from Calmy at the 1852 mark. Penner almost getting a second. May yet as uh, Godat sends it to win with some room if he can keep it in and will along the goal line. Strange deflection. Russell has Sletten behind for support. Didn't get it to him quite in time. And Earl back to help. Fine job by Dion Earl that time to clean up. I know when one of your best attacking players is back defending that he's he's solid all the way around. Again the scramble but cleared by the Falcons. Skipper getting that one over the midfield line that time. Jeff Martin trying to maintain possession for SPU called off by Dickerson. Joel Hurd's going to want to be careful again in that area of the field with any of those high balls coming in trying to settle them in that slippery muddy part. It's easy for the opposing team to come up and pressure you quick, quickly. Stauber going to try a long one that skips by, may not able to get to it, but it skids safely out of harm's way. If you look at the junior from Oak Harbor, Todd Stauber. A little bit of a misclear there. Gives Todd Stauber a chance, just skims wide. Substitutions both ways for Seattle Pacific number three, Phil Bullard, a 6'3 senior from Lakewood, Colorado, comes in. And he will give Jeff Martin a breather. And for Washington, Gerd Strom, a senior from Roosevelt High in Seattle, will come in for Viet Nguyen. Gerd's been bothered by a little bit of a groin pull lately. He's missed, I think, their last game or two. There's a look at Phil Bullard. Seven goals and five assists this year for Phil. 19 points overall and Gerd Strom. Still looking for his first goal of the season. 21 career points for Washington. Stauber gaining possession here as he loses footing then going with Godat. Sletten. Penner out near the stripe. Bullard. Dickerson looking to switch now. Finds Hale. Dalekon 
pair of markers. Nice possession, but the flag up. As a couple of attackers had gone past the back line. Strom trying to play a little one-two there with Penner, but unsuccessful. They'd definitely try to target Eric up front there. He's very strong in the air, and if they could win that second ball after the header. And a look at co-captain John Heimbigner for Seattle Pacific. Falcons trailing Washington unofficially about 32 minutes gone in the first half of play. Good back heel for Skipper. Mark Skipper, Kalmi cutting it out. Woodhouse able to uh, get that one clear, Todd Woodhouse. It was a good clearance by Todd Woodhouse. SP is definitely threatening here a little bit. He does done a good job of not letting that last crucial pass get through. Really have kept everything outside the box pretty much with the uh, initial funny bounce in the opening 30 seconds or so of play. Yeah, they've just been very solid. Again, that comes with some of the confidence they've gained in the last, you know, six, seven games. After their bit of a rough start at the beginning of the year. Penner drawing a free kick, so Washington with a chance to again get some numbers forward. Russell for Calmy. Go at Russell playing the dummy and no one there to back it up. Hale clears. Notice SPU pressure rather quickly there on the back pass. Phil Bullard doing a good job of stepping up, not allowing Joel Hurd to play forward. Skipper trying to pick out a target. Does so with Dickerson. And flag up again. Earl apparently a stride is so ahead of the defense. I have to admit that there was a <laughs> pillar right in our way as we looked up, but that's who the call was against. Russell trying to flick on. Only as far as Stauber. Godat. Great chest trap. Great control that time by Kyle Godat. And a fine job by Heimbigner to not only avoid conceding the corner, but to get possession there. And a fine job once again. Dalekon. The Falcons having to defend more and more, though, and break up passes. Godat trying to make a run. Tried to pull it across, and Stauber takes it away to give up the corner. Both teams playing decent games defensively you haven't seen either team string together more than you know three or four passes without it being dispossessed and offensively both coaches would probably like to see their teams take care of the ball a little bit more but again with having to play it in the air as much on this field uh, that's going to happen the ball is going to get turned over more often Whistle for contact in the box even before Grenade came out to punch that one away. Chuck Grenade starting 14 out of the 18 games now for the Falcons this season. Interesting note, uh, Chuck, a 25-year-old sophomore and uh, a Navy veteran. Chance here for Earl, but uh, the flag up. Disregarded by the referee as he just tells uh, Bill May to play on. Far side linesman had the flag up on Earl. A couple of the Husky defenders with hands up as well. There, Washington did a good job of winning the second, second ball there off of Penner's header off of the punt. 
He's usually going to win that one, but winning the second one is, is what's going to get your team possession of the ball. Bank grenade started the last 14 games of the season now for SPU as uh, Kyle Mercer gave way to him after starting the first four. Look at Grenade who couldn't really be faulted for that flick by Penner. The only goal here so far in the first half. Now that was a tough one to stop and I'm, I'm sure he's expecting a clearance by one of his defenders there and it Absolutely. just didn't happen. Sophomore Dominic Dickerson, we mentioned earlier, 10 assists to lead the Falcons in that department. Strom trying to get a piece of it, chance for Slett, and then he just pulled it across the face. Charles uh, reacting to that one as he slammed a hand down into the turf afterwards, really didn't get planted exactly the way he wanted to. A senior from Mountain View, one of the co-captains along with Paul Hermy. Yeah, you can never fault a player for trying a ball first time like that. You, know, you don't have time to settle it, and uh, you know, oftentimes you are going to miss those, but it's, it's worth the risk to go ahead and have a crack at it. the head of Kevin Hale. Been real impressed with the job Todd Stauber has done defensively here in the first half for Seattle Pacific. Yeah, definitely. And he, not only defensively, he's also gotten forward quite a few times. He settles the ball real well out of that back line. You see him working a one-two with Dalekon. And now finding Earl ball. in space. Earl trying to slide that one through for Bullard and taken off of it by Woodhouse. It'll be a throw in for Seattle Pacific when we come back. Welcome back to Seattle, Seattle Pacific against Washington. The Falcons trying to look for an equalizer here with a little more than seven minutes remaining in the first half of play. You know, we were talking about Todd Stauber was kind of leading that attack, that last sequence there to goal. And again, SPU is getting some good chances up until about the 18, but nothing really dangerous on frame yet. The Husky defense doing a good job of closing them down on that last kind of crucial pass into the box. Heard putting that one into touch for the throw in. Dickerson chasing it down. Falcons putting four players up in the box. Godat clearing it and then was knocked down by Bullard, so it'll be a free kick to Washington. Dean Wurzberger and Dave Chesler discussing strategy here along the sideline. Kami stepping in front of the ball intended for Dickerson to Dalekon, trying to flip for Bullard. May hesitated for a moment and then got out on top of it. A little gamesmanship there by Bullard step in front of the keeper when he's about to punt it. And he didn't exactly put it where he wanted. However, uh, Bullard called for the Offside that brings Cliff McCrath up off the bench a little upset with the call. Yeah, I'm sure Cliff thought that when the ball was played he was onside and <laughs> we have to look at the replay That's, to see that. That was the reaction <laughs> to the referee putting his uh, index finger to lips and uh, asking Cliff not to <laughs> argue. So <laughs> Cliff uh, reminded him to use his faculties. <laughs> He's still appealing. He's appealing to the far side linesman as well. all been guilty of that from time to time not me no never I would not <laughs> in a million no no especially not now when you're coaching on the bench no. No, no, no. there's a good turn by Garrett Strom there to get around the defender and then the foul this is going to be a dangerous chance here Hale whistled for it we'll take another look at it 
Gerstrom turns on his defender there, gets in front of him. Defender somewhat unwisely takes him down because this is a dangerous part of the field to give away a free kick. Sletten to the left, Kami to the right above the ball, and they'll come out and talk with Strom a bit, who uh, may help disguise a little bit here as well. We'll see. Grenade trying to make sure he has the post covered. Kalmi off oh. the frame. Russell couldn't get to it. It was, was cleared away by Hale, I believe. No, that's uh, Connell getting an important piece of the ball to uh, prevent the possible follow-up by Russell. Let's watch Kalmi's effort again. Just a lovely bending ball to the far post. As you can see from the angle here, that's a great angle of that shot. Just gets the post. I don't think Grenade even had a chance if that was a little bit lower. Constantly amazed despite the, the wall and everything else that players are able to pick out spots so well and so accurately. Yeah. John County a tremendous player at bending the ball and placing it. And there you see he just misses. Bionic leg. Meanwhile, a counter here for the Falcons. Stauber, however, loses the ball. Penner back to help. Godat challenged heavily along the sideline. Russell threads it for Sletten. Nobody else in the box right now as Penner had gone wide. Sletten brought down just outside the box. So another great chance for free for Washington. Yeah, Todd Stauber there. Uh, I think Chuck's last long touch there got by him. And you could tell here from the replay that after that touch that he, that was going to be a foul. He had no chance to play the ball there. Going into the 43rd minute of play unofficially here in the first half. And it'll be Sletten standing would, over the ball. I would watch them to target Eric Penner here on this kick, I would imagine. He was looking short for Kalmy for a minute because no one was marking him. Instead, Strom trying to get to it. Dickerson chipping it, but it's called a goal kick. Looked as though it had gone off the boot of Dickerson. We'll take a closer look. The head and the foot were both there at the same time, and it's kind of hard to tell. Referee giving uh, SP the benefit of the doubt there and awarding them the goal kick. Dion Earl getting some instruction from Cliff McCrath. Dean Wersberger, I'm sure, happy to see Dion rooted to the sideline for a <laughs> moment. Of course, now he steps right where the ball is. So Thompson behind Earl, and Godad able to take him off the ball. Penner. Oh, for that's Russell, a great ball from Penner. Really fought off a challenge, uh, did Penner to maintain control. Meanwhile, Heimbegner back nicely. Yeah, Heimbegner did a great job of uh, slowing Ian down there, not letting him get back past in that one on one. Dalakon gets on this errant pass. Earl looking for some support. Stauber, as we said, just very solid in settling the ball and finding targets. Yeah, he and Dalakon both great composure on the ball. Trying to switch. Bullard attempting to flick on for Earl. Godat clears. Strom and Skipper. Skipper, the lanky freshman, with it. Heard conceding the throw in for Seattle Pacific. This Saturday at 9, you can watch the Oregon Duck volleyball team. They'll take on the Hornets from Cal State Sacramento. You can tune in for all the action from MacArthur Court and Eugene this Saturday at 9 on Prime Sports Northwest. A little miss kick and a squib chance for Earl if it's not played perfectly by Godat. One on one. Earl trying to chip in. Woodhouse got a piece of it. And it's a goal kick. As it was last touch, the referee says, by Kenny Thompson. I think you'll see Coach McGrath argue with that call as well. I think that may have been a corner, but gave the benefit of the doubt at the other end, so he might as well at the end. Stauber, another great pass for Dalekon, couldn't quite control, and Hurd may have a chance to release Strom down the touchline. Russell and Penner running clear. Strom going for long range, and Grenade getting a piece of it. Good foot for Gerd Strom. Unofficially in added time here in the first half now. Washington leading it 1-0 on a goal by Penner in the 19th minute. Sletten. 
Russell had to jam on the brakes, couldn't get to that one. Yeah, I was just going to mention all over the field, you can see that all possession wise, both teams are having a problem with uh, just changing direction is difficult uh, on this type of surface. And so, you know, again, a lot of turnovers because of that. And you don't see five or six passes being strung together by either team. And that'll end the first half of play as the Huskies unable to uh, profit off that last throw in at all. Washington scoring in the 19th minute, as we said. Penner's sixth goal of the year gives the Huskies a 1-0 lead at halftime. On the University of Washington campus, the Huskies lead the Seattle Pacific Falcons by a 1-0 score at halftime. Todd Pickett along with Leslie Gallimore and a, and a pretty crisply played first half, Leslie, in uh, light of field conditions and some of the other problems that uh, both these teams have had to face, but uh, it's been a very uh, entertaining first half of play. It has, and the pace of the match probably isn't as fast as you would normally see it because of the field conditions. But again, both teams tactically and technically are very sound teams, and they're trying to play the game um, with the conditions as best they can, and we've seen some action on both ends of the field. It's been good. Goal and a near goal for the Huskies. Uh, the first one was the goal. Eric Penner off this uh, boot from Calmy in the 19th minute of play. Yeah, John Calmy steps up and just bends run. Uh, it looks like the SPU defender is going to clear it here, but ducks under. And uh, Penner right there to fin finish it on the side volley. Took advantage of the turtle, and uh, that made it 1 nothing. And then Calmy almost made it 2 0. Again, John Calmy tremendous at bending the ball and placing it. Here you see uh, SPU dodges a bullet somewhat. This one just nicks right off the post. Grenade cleanly beaten. Just couldn't quite get to it. Unfortunately, his back line was able to clear it with Russell bearing down for a potential header on an empty net. Numbers from the first half. The uh, shots uh, a little bit low. And, and again, really, uh, the Seattle Pacific shots, as you mentioned, have all come from outside the 18, Leslie. Right. Uh, the Husky defense doing a good job of closing down the SPU attack right at the top of the box. But again, they've got so, so many dangerous players on their team, they could just pop through there any time and get one. Dean Wurzberger giving uh, some more pointers to his players as uh, they try to make it 7-1-1 one, and one over their last nine games. Anything else you've seen in terms of uh, strategy or uh, little changes or surprises in the first 45 minutes? Um, not really. Again, I think Dean defensively would like to see his team stay organized, um, whether they're you know pushing one guy up, up high for SPU or whether they're you know two or three, uh, just kind of maintaining their composure and their organization at the back and making sure that they're matched up at all times and not letting people from the mid th midfield run through, which uh, Seattle Pacific is very capable of doing with uh, Dalacon and even Stauber coming through the middle there. Well, you saw the guys who have the heat on in there, and they're telling us it's time for another commercial. So we will take one and come back with second half action. Right after this timeout, you're watching Soccer Action on Prime Sports Northwest. Welcome back to the Husky soccer field. Washington leading Seattle Pacific by a 1-0 score. And a look at uh, some other numbers as we get ready for the second half of play. First, the Mountain Division of the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. Washington uh, behind Fresno State. And the Bulldogs clinching a berth in the uh, postseason action uh, by virtue of tiebreaker standings, et cetera, regar regardless of what happens to Washington. And as we mentioned, Seattle Pacific, the defending Division II national champions and currently ranked third in the... Uh, Division II rankings, number one in the West. They're hoping for a first round buy in the 12 team NCAA Division II playoffs. And then uh, remains to be seen whether or not the Falcons will be able to host the second round competition. But uh, definitely playoff bound once again as they'll try to defend their title. And a uh, quick stoppage as uh, Grenade has a towel <laughs> hanging from the side of the net down in the SPU goal. So he'll remove that. Chuck, uh, tending to that, will get things started once again. Mr. Sagakane re readjusting his stopwatch and uh, getting things started in this second half. Falcons, by the way, are 0-2-1 uh, against Division I teams so far this season, and the uh, two schools share two common opponents. Uh, Cal State Fullerton tied Seattle Pacific 2-2, but beat Washington 2-0. The other common opponent, Fresno State, tied Washington 1-1 and beat Seattle Pacific 3-1. So not much to be uh, taken from those uh, results, but uh, those are the two that they share so far. Throw in for Washington here in the early seconds. Huskies again in the home white, moving from right to left. Again, it looks as though SPU's pushed one guy up front and they're playing with more, more players in the midfield. Russell trying to 
flick on for Penner. Do you, do you see the Falcons kind of packing back a little bit at all or just uh, waiting uh, to use the counter where No, they I think they're just using, uh, you know, the players that they have and the ability that they have. You know, they have suffered from a lot of injuries and uh, talking to Coach McGrath before the game and his assistants. Um, they've rarely had the same lineup every game this year. They've had to adjust due to injuries and uh, today they look to be strong in the midfield, so that's what they're playing. Strong midfield with one or two up front. That one rolling nicely for Earl, and he tries to send Bullard on, but Bullard whistled offside. The uh, complaints coming from the Falcon bench. And we saw that ball kind of stop and die and really went right onto the foot of Dion Earl as a result. And it did. Bullard, who came on as a sub in the first half, remaining in the lineup. Woodhouse with a nice restart. Penner getting knocked down as he tried to get to it. Goes all the way through to Chuck Grenade. Eric picking himself back up. Those feel a little less uh, painful after you've scored during the game, though. It does. Dominic Dickerson, you can see why he's been a vital part of their team this year. Again, another really composed player on the ball. He holds the ball well for their team. Earl really given some space by Hurd. Good speed and finally uh, closed off the ball by a pair of defenders to earn the corner kick as Van Herset came over to help. A little unselfish play there, Leslie. The guy's the leading goal scorer and uh, looks to support and set someone else up. Um, again, I, their coach can't say enough about him. He's a very unselfish player, and obviously that's why he's got the captain's band on. <laughs> Earl will go to the top of the box as Stauber will take the corner for the Falcons. Kami trying to get that one out of range. Earl quite able to control. Sletten nearly getting and now will get the break on the uh, deflection as Stauber got a little bit too fancy. Couple of men down the middle sliding for Penner. And Penner puts it just wide. Both he and Strom were closing on the ball and for a minute I thought Gerd was going to get a piece of it. And I think Gerd probably thought he was going to get a piece of it as well. <laughs> um, <clears throat> here you see Sletten. Nice job of playing the wall pass off Stauber's back, not intentionally, but gets into open space. Early serve behind the defense. Penner and Gerd both running on. And Penner knocking it just wide. Yeah, but maybe a little more talk between the two on that one. But, but definitely better for one of them to hit it instead of neither of them. Very true, very true. Prado with the ball down the touch line. Good move to get around the defenders. Cleared nicely by Skipper. Russell. Good strong challenge back all the way back once again by Earl to take that one away. Sletten. Godat to Russell. And Russell brought down and another restart for the Huskies in an attacking spot. You see that the Huskies are sending more numbers forward. They're keep making sure that they have numbers up at the back. But if uh, SP is going to keep one forward up, you're going to see Prudeau and Van Herset get into the midfield into the attack a little bit more. And that's what's happened here at the beginning of the second half. Washington will put seven players up in the box on this restart by Kalmy. The low liner is uh, fielded by Grenade. That might have been a bit of a mishit by John. He usually tends to bend those a little more instead of hitting them straight like that. Heard nicely settled. Earl always seems to be around the ball somewhere, doesn't he? Dalakon. Dalakon and Earl both with tremendous mobility. They just cover so much space on the field. May off his line nicely that time. Trying to pick out Russell, who's shielded away from the ball and a good defensive play by Connell. Sixth minute of play in this second half. He had joined us late. Washington's goal coming in the 19th minute. Eric Penner. Also had Calmy take one off the bar in the first half.
Cliff McCrath back to the Falcon bench. Go out with the throw. Penner had that one go off the shoulder of Skipper, it looked like, for a minute. Russell setting Calmy and a chance here. That's a great, and, ooh. And uh, yeah, offside against Strom, and I'll tell you from this position, it didn't look like it. Yeah, it was that played. was a great ball by John Calmy. Van Herset putting that one into touch. Cliff McGrath would probably agree. Linesmen on both sides are pretty quick with the flag on the offsides calls today. Yeah, Strom appeared to have taken that one in stride quite nicely. Yeah. But was well on when the ball was played originally. Earl trying to create some space now. Van Herset with him. Stauber. Van Herset clearing. Calmy. Skipper and the mud combining to take that one away. And then Calmy whistled for the obstruction. Dickerson, Skipper looking to chip. He's got put someone it. open for our post, Earl. Originally was looking for Dalicon, put it behind and it went to Earl. And then the uh, volley attempt, Heard finally clearing off the scramble as Thompson couldn't get a solid boot on it. Yeah, Washington needs to do a little bit better job of marking up in the 18. <clears throat> the service would have been all the way over there. Uh, Dion Earl was uh, fairly open over there on the far post. Strom and Russell down the left side. Russell checked his run, goes to Penner, and that'll be a bit short as Heimbigner's back to cover. Up. Get up. And it'll go into touch to throw in for Washington. Look again at senior John Heimbigner, one of the co captains from O'Day in Seattle. A strong collision and a free to Washington. And a, w a yellow for Heimbigner as he's down on the ground, the official giving the yellow. Here they were just both challenging for the ball and <clears throat> maybe a little bit of a shoulder charge there by Heimbigner, but I don't know if it's worthy of a card or not, but he's the ref, not me. Well, Cliff McCrath doesn't <laughs> think so. You can see the uh, push and I, I'd have to agree with you from a coaching spot whether that one was really uh, that strong an obstruction, but the official now coming over to the sideline and stopping his watch to talk with Cliff McCrath. He wasn't so bold as to give Cliff a card, however. Just a little talk. Knows his limits, eh? Yep. Penner getting ahead on it, but putting it just wide. And a goal kick for Seattle Pacific. It's again, Eric Penner showing how dangerous he can be in the air on those set pieces. Many key goals Eric's had that way over the course of his career. Chance here as uh, Perdoe gets it in stride after the defender slipped. Almost played it a bit too long, but uh, great long strides to win that one. Penner trying to flick on, put it a bit high for Russell. Nearly a 1-2, but Eric was headed the other direction. That was a great ball by Brandon Perdoe and a great run from the back. Brandon's done a good job here today and, and all season. And Coach Wurzberg has been very happy with him. And as a freshman, he's got a, a bright future here at Washington. Kyle Godat slow to get up after a collision a moment ago. Free kick for Seattle Pacific. Again, Coach Wurzberg uh, shouting from the bench to make sure they're matched up at the back the way he wants them to be. Bill May able to get hold of that one easily. Relatively untested so far in the game has been Bill May. 
Oh. Calmy just overrunning that ball a bit. Thompson. Heard there doing the sweeper's job, but it goes as far as Stauber. And a throw into SPU. Stauber did well to slide about two feet to stop that ball right there. I think they're getting it <clears throat> used to the conditions of the field and knowing their limitations. Thompson just trying to keep that one in play rather than anything else. Penner, a little bump in the back. He goes down, and it'll be a free kick for Washington. The Huskies lead it, 1 0. Welcome back to Seattle. Washington leading Seattle Pacific by a 1 0 score. Phil Bullard with the ball for the Falcons. Godat there along with Hurd, and Hurd stepping in nicely. Dickerson, a little uh, extra control, but no whistle. Russell taken off nicely by Skipper. I think you're going to notice here only a 1 1 0 lead for Washington. SPU is going to start to push a little bit offensively here, and then the whole game physically, I think, will get a little bit more challenging for both teams as far as maybe a little bit of shoulder charging and fighting for 50 50 balls. Russell looking long well, and finds Penner. He has Godet, or uh, rather Strom in the middle with one defender off the post by Strom. A great dive to beat the defender, Hale. And Garrett Strom almost picked up his first goal of the year, the frame robbing the Huskies for a second time. Uh, that was just a tremendous effort all the way around. Before that, a uh, great ball from Ian Russell to Penner, and then just a tremendous effort by Garrett Strom there. As a senior with only a couple games left, you would have liked to have seen him get that one. Russell trying to pick out Strom again a bit too far for him. Perdoe finding Russell, got it past the defender. Calmy, Russell, and a late flag offside called. Dean Wurzberger up applauding that. The rest of the coaching staff as well, and really some fine links the last couple runs down the field, Leslie. Definitely. Uh, UW looking a little comfortable in their offense right now and getting some balls wide, I think, which is the best part of the field to be playing in right now. And again, getting those dangerous crosses into the box. Deflection and a throw in for Washington. Bordeaux waiting for someone to break clear. Calmy settling nicely. Woodhouse. May looking for a target somewhere. Go dad. Great one, too, that time with yeah. Van Herset. Washington did a great job of playing out of pressure there. Nice one and two touch passes. And a little chance for a break here for Thompson after Sletten fell down, releasing Earl. Heard there to mark and clear. Sletten and Stauber battle goes to Calmy. Penner with a couple of markers. Fine arm control by Heimbigner, <laughs> and he got caught that time. Not much else that John could have done without letting it skip right by. No, sometimes it's... that's the smartest thing to do. Calmy waiting for people to get forward. Penner. Russell had it put, skip by both of them, and it'll be a goal kick for the Falcons. And they'll make a substitution now. Ricky Greenwood, a 6'2 sophomore from Kent, Federal Way program, will come on for Bullard. So look at Greenwood, who's seven goals, seven assists, 21 points. I think Ricky Greenwood could be a very dangerous player. And of course, Washington, again, with only the one nothing lead, they're going to have to uh, make sure that they stay matched up on him and don't let him get any dangerous shots. Fifteen minutes gone in this second half of play. Washington leading it one nothing. Greenwood getting his first early touch. And uh, 
whistle in that attacking area. It gives a free kick to the Falcons. Dauber to take it. Dickerson flicking on. Greenwood off the keeper and a whistle in the box. Ricky Greenwood, he's dangerous and we'll take another look, Leslie. Definitely. Here you see the free kick. Greenwood. Greenwood coming in from the back post. Got in front of uh, Todd Woodhouse. Bill may have come out to smother it, but I guess they saw there's some contact and some pushing going on in there, so they called a foul. May playing short for Hurd. Van Hurst great juggling through that tough patch and a, a couple of defenders as well. Penner and Russell working. Kalmi trying to get to it. Heim Bigner there to play it. Kalmi takes it away from him. And then a whistle. Kalmi appeared to have played the ball uh, first there on that one. Yeah. Rich Van Hurst just doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the mud through that middle third. There's Calme just kind of hook sliding. Um, I'm not sure that that was a, a great call, but again, sometimes it's hard to tell. And a charge by Van Hurst is going to earn a yellow as the Falcons were trying to counter a little bit, and they'll. Uh, Again, in this match, you always <clears throat> expect things to heat up a little bit. It seems as though they are referees just trying to keep things under control a little bit. Cliff McGrath was up appealing uh, perhaps that they were on the move rather than stopping play right then. Touch ignored that time. And then the uh, tackle will be whistled for a foul on the far side. Talking again. Yeah. Kyle Godet <clears throat> gets hit from the side there. Godet unable to get to that one in time. A goal kick for Seattle Pacific. Again, I think that's where both teams are going to be successful is attacking down the flanks. Viet Nguyen will return for Washington, and Garrett Strom will take a break. Strom coming ever so close to that first goal of the year. Yep. Again, he's coming off a, a groin injury that's hampered him for a week or so, and I'm sure he wants to play Sunday as well. So Coach Wurzberger not wanting to overextend him today. A little arm control equally uh, adept from Van Herset. He's not called for it, however. So. Not all the breaks being detected. Stauber again with the control along the back. Greenwood with Woodhouse. And a throw in for Washington. Nguyen, almost uh, a bit strong, but able to run it back down once again. Russell and Godat. It's, nice, it's a nice passing sequence there by the Huskies. Starting to string four or five together. Really uh, doing a nice job using the width and switching it back and forth as well. Exactly. Corner kick for Washington, while Seattle Pacific will bring Jeff Martin back into the lineup. 5'7 freshman from Bothell. He'll replace fellow freshman Kenny Thompson. As Russell does a little shoe maintenance. 
You'll notice that Coach McGrath has done a, a good job of you know, recruiting and, and not really missing any, uh, missing a beat going from a, a national championship and losing eight seniors last year. A lot of freshmen this year still ranked third in the country with, you know, playoffs ahead. Just a tremendous program at Seattle Pacific. Godat holding it well and then releasing Russell. Pair of defenders and nowhere to go. He had Godat in support, just couldn't get it back out. Goal kick to Seattle Pacific. Connell and Dickerson doing a great job there of being patient and doubling on the ball. Late break by the Husky defense and Greenwood able to chase it down and find Earl. Looking far side for Dickerson. Godat there to head it over the line and give up the corner. Tremendous effort by Dion Earl. People are having trouble changing directions, but he didn't seem to have any trouble there. Kept the ball right on the boot. Just about 21 <laughs> minutes played here in the second half, coming up on the midway portion of the second half of play. Washington's first half goal, making it a 1-0 score thus far. Stauber on the corner. May calling for it, takes it right off the top of Mark Skipper. That's solid goalkeeping by Bill May to hold that ball up there with a challenge from the SBU player. Connell and Stauber losing it. Sletton taking it away. Calmy's pass a bit strong for Nguyen. Time for Kevin Hale to settle this one back down. Tried to pick out Martin, but left it short. Russell now down the left flank. Penner. Earl taking that one away, and they throw in. Russell trying to turn Earl back to mark him. <laughs> forward on forward. Penner chipping for Russell. Just couldn't quite get to it as it skids into touch. That was a nice idea. And again, this is where both teams are going to find their success is trying to exploit the flanks a little bit and get serves into the box. Earl getting a piece of that. Falcons trying to release Greenwood as he steps around Hurd. Woodhouse back to help. Van Hersitz clear as far as Earl. Prudeau marking him. Dion Earl is just a lot of fun to watch. He's a very skilled player. A lot of speed, a lot of quickness. Penner losing that one in the uh, bog. Heimbigner trying to find Dominic Dickerson down the corner. Godet, Dickerson keeping it in to Greenwood. And he loses it. Kyle Godat, great job there to sneak up behind and take that ball. That was going to be a dangerous chance there. Nguyen trying to battle with Connell. And a free kick for Washington. Russell trying to flick that one on came up a bit short. Martin. Calmy trying to chase that one down. Skipper will let it go into touch for a throw in. One nothing Washington. Our score here in the second half. Dalekon taking this free kick for Seattle Pacific as we return to action. A little over 25 minutes gone in the second half of play. 
Washington leading it by a 1-0 score. Good back heel by Stauber. Greenwood. Greenwood looking, a little collision there. May able to keep it away with Jeff Martin bearing down on him. That's twice there that Jeff Martin is challenged for a ball right in front of Bill May. Bill again doing a good job of holding it, but SP is threatened a little bit here in the last 10, 15 minutes. Penner with a beautiful flick on for Russell, who was impeded a bit. Heim Bigner doing a good job to keep Russell from getting to it. Now a chance for Dickerson as he steps over Godat's tackle. Woodhouse scrambling with Greenwood. Woodhouse wisely playing that one out. Offensively, they are doubling a little bit on Ian Russell, and uh, I think the Huskies need to start doing a little bit better job of playing off him and giving him a little more support in the attack. Stauber waiting to settle the ball and trying to find somebody. A little bit uh, much for Dickerson, who couldn't control. Calmy puts it back into touch and a throw in for the Falcons. Look at Mark Skipper. Russell holding, waiting for some support. Kalmi and Godat. That one, a good turn by Russell to get to it. Giving it back up. Dickerson couldn't quite get to it, however. And a throw in for the Huskies. Kenny Thompson up on the Seattle Pacific bench, talking to Cliff McCrath, see if the freshman from Coeur d'Alene will head back in. Both teams getting bogged down a little bit and playing too many short passes in a row in that one area. Um, maybe need to change it up and look, play a couple short and then maybe play out with a long ball to the weak side. Godat with a good run, finding some space. And uh, just a little bit behind Slut and tried to check his run and do what he could with it, but couldn't quite get to it. It'll be a goal kick and substitutions both ways. The Huskies will bring in freshman Tim Lawson from Peninsula High in Gig Harbor. He will uh, replace Eric Penner as you're getting a look at Charles Sletton. And for Seattle Pacific, Kenny Thompson will come back in the lineup and Todd Stauber will take a break. There's Lawson. Three goals, two assists, eight points in his 13th game of play now. Pretty good all-around athlete, actually. Uh, All-league football player at four positions in high school for Peninsula. Running back, defensive back, kicker, and returner. Led Peninsula to state finals appearances in football and soccer. Sletton. Russell trying to turn, and again, Connell solid along that side. Yeah, but Ian hasn't busted out too many times in this game, and uh, Connell's, it, Connell's doing a good job on him defensively. When he does, you can see how dangerous he is. And as you said a moment ago, Ian was the one who set up the uh, little run by Godat down into the corner and created some space for Sletton's attempt. Exactly. Little excavation work. Godat is dirty enough, doesn't matter, uh, doesn't mind a little bit more. As we uh, close in on the half hour mark here in the second half. Sletton. The win uh, trying to get to that one. Settled uh, by Prado as he tries to find someone. Kalmi up top. Heard. Russell trying to flick on in looking for Lawson. Now Earl has Martin running. Van Hurst back nicely to cover. Martin playing it that into goes. the corner and finally a goal kick for Washington. Look like that might stay. A reminder, Big Sky Conference football comes your way live on Prime Sports Northwest this Saturday at 11 Pacific. The Idaho State Bengals will take on 
the Wildcats of Weber State. You can catch all the action from Ogden beginning at 11 Saturday right here on Prime Sports Northwest, your home for Big Sky football. Calmy looking to release Nguyen down the side. Heimwegner back. Plays that one smoothly. Nguyen getting a deflection. Earl to support. Skipper. Heard. Skipper once again very strong in the air. Calmy a nice touch for Prudeau. Nguyen. John Calmy even there showing with that, that header that he's got such great tactical awareness. You wonder if he headed that to him on accident or if it was intentional and you know it's intentional because that's that's what kind of player he is he's just very solid and knows where his teammates are at all times. going into touch at time Hale unable to hang on to Thompson's pass. Kevin Hale from the Air Academy in Colorado Springs a sophomore at SPU. Skipper sending that one back over the sideline once again. Sletton. A little miscommunication that time as uh, both Nguyen and Purdue had checked their runs. Calmy skidding to a stop. Godat and Russell teaming up once again. Hale, only as far as Calmy. Prado, Sletten not able to get to that one. Van Hurst stepping in, but a throw in for Seattle Pacific. It's good timing by Richard Van Hurst to step up and win that ball. <laughs> SPU keeping three forward, but not having great luck connecting with their front runners in the last five, ten minutes. You see Greenwood. Ball deep into the corner. That'll be a dangerous ball. Godet back feels the uh, pressure on his back from Dickerson just concedes the simple throw in unofficially about 12 minutes clock time remaining here in the second half of play Washington hanging on to a one nothing lead on a 19th minute goal by Eric Penner. Greenwood and Woodhouse both miss it and it goes harmlessly to May uh, moments of danger as Kenny Thompson was also there. You don't like to see balls bouncing like that in the 18. Especially if you're the keeper. Mm -hmm. Nguyen and Hale give chase. Hale wins the battle. Throw in for Washington. Todd Stauber up talking with Cliff McGrath as he awaits a break to check back into the lineup. Nguyen. Nice job by Sletton to dispossess Heimbigner, and then he finds Russell. Calmy, good run by Godat. One more step, and he would have gotten to it, but well played that time by the freshman skipper. Does concede the corner, but he uh, stopped a dead breakaway by Godat that time. Mark Skipper from Glencoe High in Hillsboro, Oregon. John Calmy did a great job to one touch that ball through there. And again, Skipper with the save there at the last minute. Give you dub the corner. Calmy will restart it. Off the head of Kevin Hale and another corner. And without Penner in there, you look for Todd Woodhouse to get up in the air and uh, have them target him. Real surprise, too. Uh, Sletton standing out, oh, probably 10 yards beyond the edge of the box. They're just off the right of your picture. And with his foot, now he trots towards Calmy, but uh, he's being left unmarked. Now Jeff Martin's sprinting back to close yeah. in on him a little bit. Chuck would love to have one pop out to him so yeah. he can get a first time shot. Martin trying to settle this one. Van Herset beating him to it. Finds the win. Greenwood and Earl trying to stop Viet Nguyen to Lawson. Draws that back nicely. Sletton. 
Dickerson got back in the nick of time or else Calmy would have been free down the far sideline. Calmy winning it still battling through the defense. Pushed that one just a bit too strong but the keeper loses it. Grenade lost the ball and Russell hits the bar. Got a little bit casual oh. that time I think and now a whistle in the box. Ian just uh, was going to kind of uh, nonchalantly tap that one in and uh, had it go by. It's a little bit of action going on there. Let's take another look. Again John Calmy just very strong on the ball. Great touch his ball close to his feet. Takes a little bit long touch. Grenade slips. And uh, yeah Ian Russell thought that was just an easy slot ball and it popped up on him. SP definitely dodged the bullet there. Prado intercepting Lawson waiting for the ball and Heimbigner beat him to it as he didn't get to it in That's time. Nice now ball. Dickerson Greenwood two in the box more support coming. Pulled it back a bit strong and Hurd able to deflect it enough. Calmy getting it clear. Good defending again by the UW team. Uh, SPU solid break. Heimbinger did a good job to step in and play that ball forward. He's just been very solid at the back all day for Seattle Pacific. Nguyen pushing through almost got it as defenders are starting to slide every which way. Yep. Van Herset off of Earl and a throw in for Washington. A little over eight minutes remaining unofficially now in the second half. Hale conceding another throw. Well although there's only one goal on the scoreboard uh, Dean Wurzberger has to be pleased with the good offensive flow and the uh, number of shots that his team's had here in the game. Yeah they've had their chances obviously two balls on the or three two balls three balls have hit the post now and uh, <clears throat> You know they, they could be up by more than one goal at this point but again a one nothing lead with any time on the clock is not a comfortable lead you'd like to see them uh, get one more just to kind of secure the victory SPU's got dangerous players on the field right now and they've had a couple opportunities Sletton trying to create another one here as he battles by grenade got a piece of it then didn't know where it had gone Sletton got a pretty good foot on it considering the defensive pressure he, he was under Chuck grenade did a good job to come out and cut down his angle there. So grenade active here all of a sudden having to scramble but uh, he'll definitely want to kiss the posts after this game they have been his allies so far. Can't think of many contests out here where such a high percentage of the attempts have been frame shots. Godat and Calmy. Heimbigner there to clear. Again, a look at one of the Falcon co captains. Throw a little bit strong for the uh, Husky attackers. Well won by Todd Woodhouse there. Earl a little miss kick there and it'll go as far as Prado couldn't quite control it and a throw in for Seattle Pacific. Russell. And uh, everybody kind of losing footage. <laughs> Skipper almost creating some problems for himself. Helped out by Dalagon and uh, we haven't had a Dalagon uh, in much action here for a good portion of the second. No, half. not in the second half. We saw a lot more of them in the first half. Again, I think that's going to play maybe a few more long balls and not playing through the midfield as much due to the conditions. Dickerson with this throw. Now the Falcons beginning to push a bit. Hale coming up from his defender spot. As uh, SPU puts all 10 men in the attacking half of the field. Dickerson. Brandon Perdue does an excellent job there of staying on his feet and uh, turning quickly. Nguyen battling one on one as he uh, fights off the challenge of Connell. Russell. It's a great ball. 
or attempted ball. Yeah. To see him on the far side there. On the outside of the boot, and just left a little short for Lawson. Greenwood, heard there. Thompson, Earl. Earl with Hurd. May, the diving save, colliding with uh, one of the players, and Bill May shaken up a little bit. He took a cleat to the head there. Yeah. And the uh, free kick will go to Washington as May is uh, shaken up. And while they take a look at the Husky keeper, we'll take a pause as well. Inside the final five minutes of play, Washington with a 1 0 lead. Welcome back to the Husky soccer field. Keeper Bill May a little slow and sluggish getting up, but otherwise appears to be okay as we restart action. Hale losing that one momentarily. Russell getting around the defender nicely. Three men in red to mark him, however, and a good slide by Skipper to take it away. Very well timed. It was a nice slide tackle. Got all ball, got up with it, possessed it. And the Huskies are right back on the attack now. Sletton, good control, has a couple to his right. Tried to slot it through for Lawson, but was unsuccessful. Lawson with room to turn. Two markers, however. And Heimbigner comes up with it. Yeah, Tim's going to have a hard time turning right there with two people on him. Better to look for support and then get it back behind the defense if he can. Greenwood. Hale, uh, Earl rather, uh, left alone down the right side momentarily. Now uh, Sletton coming back to help mark him. That's a dangerous run yeah, all of a sudden was, you look he up. He was wide open there. Lawson, Hale taking it away from him. Heimbigner shifting to four wheel to get to that one, but Greenwood offside. A reminder, the race for the roses is in full gear and you can help uh, see things get cleared up on Prime Sports Northwest. This Saturday, the big game for Martin Stadium and Pullman you can see it starting at 10.30 as the Cougars entertain the USC Trojans. Two of the teams tied for first right now in the Pac-10 football race. And you can see all the action here on Prime Sports Northwest, Saturday night at 10.30. You're home for Pac-10 football. Hale trying to chip into the box. May off the line as the Falcons just... Uh, Kind of testing the Husky keeper a little bit after that previous collision. I'm not so sure I'd come flying out there if my head just got kicked. <laughs> Knocked his hat right off. Throw in for Washington and unofficially about a minute and a half of time plus whatever our referee adds on. Woodhouse, Huskies uh, may be looking to just play a little possession here in the closing seconds, but instead he was trying to go long. Grenade has it, the Falcon bench screaming at him to get it back into play in a hurry. Van Herset, Russell couldn't quite get to it. Hale the quick throw. Good job that time by Perdoe to take it away from Earl. Covered nicely by Thompson. Greenwood and Woodhouse. Thompson knocked down by Woodhouse and a chance for a free kick for the Falcons here in the closing seconds. The Huskies have to be really careful not to get too complacent just because the clock's winding down. SPU doing a good job of putting some pressure on him here in the waning moments. Dalicon. Bredeau getting uh, most of that. Russell knocking it down and maintaining some possession chance for a little bit of a counter here. Van Herset, Calmy. Hale trying to close on him. Calmy with a chance. Footing playing into that as well. And then Earl fouled by Calmy. Everybody up off the bench lines when reminding everybody to stay back off the touch line and uh, sit back down. That brought everybody off the bench as they thought Calmy was going to put home a little insurance in the That's closing seconds. A little tough for him to get his footing to cut and turn like he likes to do. That was a good counterattack by the, by the Huskies there. Hale taking it away from Lawson. Dalicon. Yeah. 
They need to look to play one long here. And a throw in for Seattle Pacific. Again, by our unofficial count now, we're in added time here in the second half. But the referee does stop clock for delays, goals, etc. Skipper will try to take a quick throw. Woodhouse playing it back and out of play. Russell trying to play that out. And again, the uh, shouts of quickly, quickly for Kevin Hale to get the ball back in. Washington uh, content just play down the sides, and they have done enough as Seattle Pacific unable to get a shot on in the closing moments. And uh, on a day with some difficult footing and field conditions, the 19th minute goal by Eric Penner enough to stand up as Washington beats crosstown rival Seattle Pacific by a score of one to nothing. Back to wrap things up from the Husky soccer field right after this timeout. Washington with its first victory in the last four meetings with Seattle Pacific. A tie and two losses prior to that. The Huskies coming up with a victory one nothing on Eric Penner's goal. And uh, there the uh, senior smiling with a game winner. And uh, overall, uh, you know, uh, as we've said uh, so often, scores don't reflect the uh, overall effort. And uh, on a difficult day, uh, pretty good at both ends. Washington with several chances, of course, as we said, uh, a lot off the bars as well. And the back line really uh, making it a pretty routine day for Bill May. Yeah, it was, uh, he didn't really have that many dangerous shots there at the end with a couple challenges in the air. He held onto the ball well. But I think most of the, the scary offensive chances came for Washington when they hit the post two or three times, once off a, a free kick from Calmy, and then the diving header by Garrett Strom, and then another uh, kind of missed chance there by Ian Russell at the end. Uh, you know, they had some dangerous chances on goal. Well, Washington now 7-1-1 one, and one in the last nine games and kind of still got to be mixed emotions for Dean Wurzberger. A great feeling of how the team's been playing during that stretch, but still frustration over what could have been at the start of the year if things right. had been clicked. Just, just a little disappointing that, that they didn't start off a little stronger. They played such a tough schedule in most of the games on the road at the beginning of the year. And again, some new players added into the mix. You never know how they're going to gel. And it did take them a few games to figure things out and again, start playing a little more solidly uh, defensively. You know, I think the disappointment comes where they, they you know, had the chance to get in the mountain division of their, their conference um, to get into the, you know, the right to play uh, the southern half of the division, and that didn't happen. So, again, you know, good victory, victory today for them. They've got Oregon State to look forward to at the end of the season. Seattle Pacific dropping to 11-4-3. and three. We'll wish Cliff McCrath and the Falcons good luck in the NCAA Division II playoffs. The Huskies now 9-7-2 and two overall after a 1-0 victory over their crosstown rivals. That'll wrap things up from the Husky soccer field. A reminder to stay tuned next for great sports vacations. Our final score today, Washington over Seattle Pacific. Eric Penner with the game winner as the Huskies post a 1-0 victory. For Leslie Gallimore and our entire crew, I'm Todd Pickett. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, so long, everybody.